All right, good morning, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon. I don't know exactly where you guys are at. Uh, my name is Miguel Cisneros. I work for Honeywell at the Miami office at the tech support and training department. And in this case, we're going to do a webinar about Lean Touch L5210. Uh, we're going to do like a express training because uh, there is a lot of things to to talk about. So we're going to try to fit everything in an hour. Um, if you got any questions, we can do it at the end. Or um, if we got time, we can do it at the end. Or if not, uh, you can shoot me an email. Go ahead and then I, I will gladly answer any any questions or doubts, okay? <clears throat> okay, Lean Touch L5210. This is a express training. Uh, we're going to see features um, of, the, of, the, of the panel. Uh, this is uh, the objective of the presentation. We're going to do the features. We're going to see the wiring. We're going to see installer programming, how to add a wireless zone, how to add a wireless key like a key fob. Uh, we're going to do a little, we're going to touch base a little bit about uh, central station programming. We're going to see a little bit also about programming the alarm net communication module, uh, some user functions, some video setup, and testing system. Features, this panel, it has 80 zones. It has one hardwire, only one, uh, it has 60, I mean, 16 key, uh, key fault songs. Those, those songs are from 140 to 155. And then we got in total of 60, 63 um, wireless songs, protection songs. If we add 63 minus 16 plus 1, we got to the total of 80 songs. It, Support up to 32 user codes. Uh, it has 120, 128 viewable event log, 16 reminders and schedules. Uh, it has a crystal clear 4.3 color display. It has a two-way uh, voice over, two ways communication voice over GSM, IP, or Wi-Fi. It supports Total Connect and has remote services, and we can add Total Connect cameras also. Those are local view only. Another features are um, the programming. It has an intuitive programming interface. You can add up to two expansion ports for C-Way technology and Wi-Fi. It has two dedicated buttons for easy use, panic and home. You can see on the on the front, panic and home. It has a contact ID or SIA reporting format options. The L5210 Wi-Fi in includes the WPS roaming. The L5210 Z-Wave includes the network-wide inclusion. And the L52 family panel includes advanced the protection logic. It has the garage door status and control. Uh, you can see in the in the screen they give you a notification when it's a severe weather tornado. Uh, it uses the Honeywell CW stat, which is um, the technology to control the thermostat for the AC. And you also you can add a water bulb control. Other other features are uh, speaker phone options message center, uh, pods, which is a regular uh, analog line, phone line. It supports GSM, IP, Wi-Fi as a part of communication options. Uh, remote phone control feature when using pods line. Remote programming over pods line or alarm using compass software. Menu driven radio registration, signal strength display real-time clock and calendar, voice announcement of system status, 
and end user device activation. Uh, this is the nine stay silent exit feature. It has the double exit delay time, which is going to be a little bit later. Uh, it has the option for R9, stay arm, quick arm, if enabled. Uh, the L5210 it's, um, is compatible with the S, I mean SIA organization, who is the the one who rules all the all the um, all the panels, and we are we are compatible with it. With the they usually what they ask is. You need to have an exit error, exit warning, recent closing, test restore, power up in previous state, meaning when you lose power, and the, if the system is armed and you lose power, it, you it have to come back in the same arm with the system arm. It can't, it can't come back with a system unarmed. Um, other fields have some restrictions and default change. The swinger suppression, one, two, three, four, five, six only. Alarm report delay, no delay, 15 seconds, 30 seconds, or 45 seconds. <clears throat> Entry delay, one and two. It could, you could uh, select it on none, 15 seconds, 30, 45, 60, 90 seconds, or two, three, four minutes. We're going to see that later on. Uh, the exit delay, one. And two also, you can program to 45, 60, 90 seconds, or two minutes. Uh, the the ones on red it, it indicate the default um, default values that the panel comes with it from out of the box. <clears throat> We're gonna see now a little bit of the wiring inside the the panel. This is how it looks like um, on the left on the left side up up left side, this is the connection for the phone line. The tip, the ring, the tip and the ring, the incoming and the outgoing. Uh, this is the the connection for the battery. There's two kind of battery. This is the standard, this is the extra battery. We have the, this is the zone, the only wire zone, hard wire zone that this panel has. Um, this is for the end of the line. This is um, the trigger, the ground, and in these two, it's a power. This is the power supply, nine volts, 2.7 amps, this panel use. Um, this is a speaker connection right here. It goes up to here, this is a speaker connection. This is a microphone connection right here. And this is where the GSM module is it's installed in the case you're going to install that let's go to the one this is um the backup batteries the part number for the backup batteries it usually the battery stand stand by time four hours minimum low battery notification it is going to tell you about one hour before the depletion the battery part number is the second battery part number we have two uh, kind of batteries. This is this this is last this one lasts more 24 hours minimum. Uh, the same uh, the low battery notification is at least one hour before. Must be used when 24 hours backup is required and recommended when a communication module is used. Note: battery may take up 40 hours to fully charge. A low battery message may take up four hours to clean on its own. We're gonna do some installation, install programming. In order to enter the programming, in the main uh, screen, you go down here, this is more. You press on more. Then it's gonna, it's gonna show you the second screen, which you gotta go and the tools. Then you're going to install the, the installer code. By default, the installer code is 4112. You type 4112. <clears throat> and then you enter into the programming. 
Uh, we're going to go first to program. This is um, this is very important. This is in case uh, you have there's no installed code. How to get into programming? If you don't remember or you don't know the installer code, uh, what you do, you power cycle the the, the, the panel. Uh, you gotta take out the power plus you gotta unplug the battery, and then you you plug everything back. So the the panel is gonna initialize. Uh, a red system standby banner will be displayed. After the red banner changes to yellow or green, you press security, followed by away or stay. Next, you press clear, followed by zero, zero. And now you add the installer uh, tool menu, and then you press program to enter the program mode. Uh, note the system must be disarmed in the disarm state to enter programming. Uh, okay, enter programming. The system programming screen will appear and the arm and ready let we flash. Okay, we are in the system programming uh, menu right now to select. The first thing we do, we always recommend to select to default the, the panel. Even if it's right out of the box, we don't need to default the panel, but if the panel is, is coming from somewhere else that we don't really know, what we do, we always uh, recommend to default the panel. So it's like out of the box. So to select factor of default from a set of four tables, press down the arrow. You press down the arrow, you keep going down in the, main, the first screen. <clears throat> Then over here, in the second uh, screen, you select the default configuration. Then you want to select default configuration one. There is a, there is four kind of uh, default configuration. Each one that's um, default different um, fields, but we always use configuration one to most likely include everything. We configure the whole panel, so we. Select default configuration one. They're gonna ask you, are you sure to confirm? You say yes. And then it's gonna it's gonna beep three times and then that's when the panel is telling you that the the, the panel is already in default. So you go back to the to the main menu, you press the back arrow key twice to return to the main installer menu. Now we're gonna we're gonna select the installer code. <clears throat> the installer code. I'm sorry. Hello. Okay, well, I'm gonna continue. We're gonna enter the, the installer code, which is by default four one one two. If you wanna if you're gonna change it, you select clear or you backspace and uh, to delete the current code and then you enter the new digit uh, installer code and select done. This is if you wanna change it. If not, we're gonna keep going with the four four one one two which is the default. At the end you select done. Now we're gonna do the System type. We're gonna go into the system type field. Uh, here it's gonna show you different fields like RF jam, speakerphone, two-way voice. All these fields. It's depending on the customer if you're gonna disable or enable them. So this is where you disable, enable the different fields. Uh, there's a no a screenshot show remote access serial and multi-mode serial never for to connect. Well, this is um, this is two fields. I'll show you right here. This is one. This is two. That that are very important if we're gonna enable this panel to use a uh, total connect. So you can go down the arrow. You see my, uh, more options, and then at the end, always at the end, always you gotta save it. If you don't save it, nothing is going to be really changed. Um, how to program the date and time? If uh, if we're using a, a, a GSM module, 
for communication. Uh, then the time and day will be updated automatically via the alarm net network control center. The correct time zone must be still programmed. To change the time and zone, select time and zone. <clears throat> it's going to open another another window. You enter the date. First, always they're going to ask you for the date. You go, uh, you select the arrow, uh, the down arrow to set the time. You select the, uh, you select uh, the time. And then you you're gonna get the, the the second screen, the third screen that that you're gonna put the time zone and the daylight saving time if it's required. You press save. It's very important to to change the time zone. You save it every time you make any changes. You gotta save it. Now we're gonna go up to. We already have set up the at least the configuration, the system configuration. Now we're gonna see how to add a wireless zone on this panel. Uh, to add, edit, or delete a wireless sensor, you gotta go and select zone. You add new or select the zone to edit because there's uh, some zones like number two, they're already there by default. You can use it, you can delete it, you can, you can change the name. We're gonna see how. Uh, like this one, number two is front door, number three is back door, number four is window, five motion sensor, six is new. It comes already with the, uh, by default. So you add a new, you select new, or select the, the front door, I mean, whatever zone you wanna start working on. It's gonna ask you for the serial number. There's two ways to enroll a serial number, a wireless serial, a wireless device serial number. Either you enter every single device, a, serial, a wireless device, it has a, a serial number, a sticker with a serial number. You either, you write it down, you enter it manually, or you enroll it via RF learning, which means you, you, um, you treat the, the, the sensor of the wireless three times. The first time it's gonna recognize the serial number. The second time you trigger, it's gonna rec it's gonna recognize the loop number, and the third time it's gonna confirm that it, there is communication between the panel and the device. So, it, like in this case, in the picture is showing like it's already confirmed the the serial number. Now it's gonna confirm the loop number, and then at the end it it confirms the the, the, the communication between the device and the and the panel. After that, you, you you press done. After selected done, if the serial number or blue number are confirmed on the third open and close sequence, the screen will return to the zone edit the screen with the serial number or blue number display. So it's going to show you everything. Like right now, it shows you the serial number, the loop number. Now we're gonna go and do the the zone description. Uh, you select the zone description one, and then either you type uh, whatever you wanna call the zone. Uh, the zone after this one, this panel has already a program with some uh, names already on the on the memory. I'm sorry. So after, like, if you're pressing S, it's gonna it's gonna show the first um, the first word starting with the letter S, and then if you press L, it's gonna show the first uh, word coming from S L <clears throat> until you you find the correct word. It is it's gonna display the correct word, and then you press done. If it doesn't it doesn't show you the the word that you wanna you wanna you wanna name your, your zone, then you, you delete it and then you, you type it on this screen. After you finish, you get the zone name, you press done. So the edit screen now displays the zone, the new zone description. To edit a device type, select device type. 
here is going to tell you, you're going to tell the system what is it. It's a door, it's a window, it's a motion sensor, it's a glass break, it's a smoke detector, it's a heat uh, sensor, a carbon monoxide, that, um, this is uh, the smoke detectors. You can go down the arrow to see more options. Uh, entry one, entry two, perimeter, interior follower, day nine. If you're gonna, um, if response type option for door, select the response type for this one. Then the display will return to, as soon as you select the, the sun time, it's gonna return to edit screen. We'll return to the edit screen. So now we have uh, pretty much, we got the serial number, the loop number, sun description, device type, and the response type. Uh, then we're gonna go um, the option the alarm report. If you gonna if you want the the panel to send an alarm report, an alarm report yes or no. Uh, the chime you can disable it. You can do a standard melody melody zone. So there's many options. And then if you want the zone to be supervised or unsupervised, it's everything here depends on the on the customer. You know? After you done with that. You always press save. Now we're gonna we're gonna show how to add a wireless key. Wireless key, the key fob. Um, to add, edit, or delete a wireless uh, wireless key, you gotta go and select keys. One second. You. I'm sorry. Uh, you you um, you select keys, and then you select add new because there is none right now. And then you select the key type, and then you scroll to the available key type. Options are one, two, four, six, or eight uh, buttons. Then we go to the serial number. Usually, we usually use the the four buttons um, key fob. We go to the serial number. And, okay, here again, we, we enter the serial number or we enroll it via RF Learning. To enroll the wireless key three, press for two seconds and release. Transmission of the device will be required to configure the serial number. Same thing. In this case, we're gonna add, we're gonna, um, we're gonna press each individual key of the key fob. Key fob, uh, in this case, has four buttons. So you press the first one. It's gonna, it's gonna um, recognize the serial number. Then you press it again. It's gonna, it's gonna recognize the loop number. And then we're gonna do it for each, for each button on the key fob. So we're gonna do it four times. Each uh, button is going to have a loop number, and which is going to recognize it automatically. And then after you finish, you select um, done. So in this in in this screen, this shows that the key type is four button, the serial number, the zone automatically is going to take zone 140. Um, that's that's by default. The zones on the keypad and the key fob, I'm sorry, they start from zone 40 to up to 156, because you can have up to only four keypads and four zones each, they are 16. So you started from zone 40, 140. Uh, like the key, the key, the key button one, it takes uh, zone 140. The key button two, it takes zone 141. The key three is going to take so 142 and the key four is going to press uh, 144. Then we're going to um, select the user because if you don't select a user, the key fob is not going to work. Even if it's programmed and then it's going to show you the serial number, everything. If you don't if you don't assign a user to the key fob, it's not going to work. So this is the this second thing we're going to do now. We're gonna assign a user. 
the way you assign a user, you select the user that will be associated with a wireless key that is being enrolled. Uh, user one, I mean user three, four, user one or will master, you can change it. User two is a guest, user three. In order for the wireless key to undesign, a user code must be associated with a key wireless. Yeah, that's what I, I just told you. So let's select user four. So now you have everything. You got the, the, the type, the user, the serial number, and it's already programmed. All four buttons are already programmed. <coughs> Defaulting to default table one, we set up the button key at display below. Well, this is um, like template, default table one, this up to four tables. If you wanna uh, like program the same program for all four key parts, you can you can do a table, create a table, and then you just gotta default to table one. Uh, but this is more or less how how it's gonna how it's gonna work. The keypad, there are the four buttons: arm away, arm stay, disarm, and the fourth one is no response, which you can put it. Uh, you can select anything. As of right now, it's no response, but you can assign any any kind of uh, actions. We're gonna add a wireless key. Press down the down arrow icon for more options. Oh, this is, um, you're gonna, they did not respond, the button number four, as of right now, is not a response. So we're gonna assign a 24 hours audible, like a panic, in case uh, something happens, you just press that and then it's gonna panic. So this is how you, um, you program the four buttons, 24 hours out of all. And in reality, you can you can even do 24 silence, 24 auxiliary, arm away, arm stay. But we usually do it for 24 hours out of all. When all completed, when all, all completed changes to the key I have this made, you select save. This will return this, the display screen back to the screen, to the key screen after you select save. Okay, now we're gonna see a little bit about how to um, how to program the Lint Touch uh, 5210 with the central station. Uh, you select on the main screen, system programming, you select report, reporter. Uh, you select either primary central station info, info or secondary central station info. You have uh, two two options, the primary or secondary. We wanna select the primary. When you select um, font type, to scroll through the font type options, it's either contact ID, it's either four digits, contact ID, 10 digits. We usually use, up to now, all central station, most of the central station, uh, they use the four digit uh, contact ID. So then we select um, phone number. We enter the phone number, which uh, the phone number of the central station. You select done when entries are complete. The display will return to the central station information screen after you press done. Now we're gonna select the account number to edit the information, account number. Here, you enter the desired account number and then select done. Uh, hold on one second. Yeah, we, did, we select the account number. With that. Um, it, uh, you select either clear or backspace to remove the current account number. If there is one already there, that's how you, uh, you clear and put a new one. You either clear or, uh, or backspace. If using an alternative mode of communication such as uh, ESM, IP, or Wi-Fi, we gotta select the communication type to select the alternative communication path. So we're gonna select communication type. We make changes to the dynamic priority and the dynamic delay. We're gonna make changes to those two. 
um, dynamic priority, the options are preferred radio, redundant reports, or preferred telco. Dynamic uh, priority, well, dynamic delay, it was, there's something wrong there. The dynamic uh, delay, it's either 30, 60, 90, or 15 seconds. It depending on the, everything is depending on the customer. You select down the arrow for more options. You want more options. You select each report type to toggle, enable, disable, or select report all to enable or report. This is um, how, again, how the, the customer wants it. You want to enable all reports or disable or, or go through by one by one. Well, I mean, if you select all reports, you don't have to go to report alarm, report open, close, enable. Everything is gonna, everything is gonna be included there. So you save it to save the settings. Then we go to select follow me phone one. Follow me home one or two options. There's two options. We're gonna do number one. There's two follow me one or two. Um, then, give me one second, hold on. What is this? Um, I'm sorry. Uh, follow me, type. When you, uh, when your other options are, are confirmed, how you want it, you save it. And then select report section. And then we here, we make the necessary changes as we need it. Uh, if you go down, you're gonna have more um, more options. All these are reporting. If you're gonna enable or disable uh, any kind of reporting, if you want the whole thing or just, you wanna report just arm away or just disarm or just troubles, here is the, the fields of, that you, um, you program in order to get the report that you want. Um, make changes as needed, select down for more options. When you finish all the, all the to filling out all the spaces, you, you press save. And then we go back to the reporting uh, menu, main menu. We select options, make changes as needed. When select save, when completed, here, Again, how many reports you wanted to be sent, uh, the first report you wanted in what time, the frequency of the report every 30 days, every week, every day, every 12 hours. It all depends on the, on the customer. You save it. And then this one is the downloaded options. We go into um, the downloader. We select downloader. Then select uh, the back arrow icon when all reporters option are complete to go back. Then we are in the main menu again. From the installer programming screen, press the down arrow icon. So we have more options. We're going to uh, select the sounder now. And then here, uh, there's some options for the sounder. Uh, the burglary alarm sound. You're gonna press yes or no. The bell timeout, four minutes. It's by default count for four minutes. You want it like when it's a uh, when the when the alarm is armed. Um, there's a alarm. How how many minutes you want the alarm to to sound? By default, four minutes. You can put a minute, twelve minutes, or you can either um, select. A, as long as it, as long as uh, somebody and disarm the system, the bell is going to keep going. So after you select the options, you go save. Now we're going to go to select. Uh, we're going to select system settings again. We're going to make the changes to the system settings for the entry delay. Um, there's two entry delays: 30 seconds. I mean, entry delay one, entry delay two. How many seconds you want the, the entry delay? I mean, how many seconds you want the, the panel, the keypad to wait? 
until it goes into alarm. Uh, usually there is two entry delays. I mean, one could be the main the main door, which everybody uses, and uh, the second uh, entry delay could be the, for example, a garage door. So we usually the entry delay one we put it at 30 seconds or max 45 seconds because it's the door that is close to the to the keypad. You don't need too many you don't need too many too much time for to arm or disarm because it's close to the door. But the second one you usually use it for, uh, like for example, garage, and then you can put more. You usually put it a little more time, like 60 seconds, for example, because you're gonna need more time to. By the time you get out of the car and then you go to the keypad, you're gonna need more, <clears throat> more time. Uh, we have an exit delay also. It could be 30 seconds, 45 seconds, 60 seconds. It all depends on the customer. Uh, the backlight timeout or the or the panel. Uh, if you want to keep arm, quick exit, uh, restart exit time. You want to force bypass, yes or no. You gonna you want an exit warning, yes or no. Or you want to auto stay arming, yes or no. After you all, you select everything. You press the the down arrow. There's more options. Like lack like, of uh, user notify, power up in previous mode, display exit time. When you when you're done with all these options, you select save, and it's gonna it's gonna go back to the to the previous menu. Now the next one is reset master code. How to how you uh, how you reset a master code? You select master code. If you want to change it, by default is one, two, three, four. If you want to change it, then you go to this option, reset master code. <clears throat> it's going to ask you, reset master code, yes or no. It's going <clears> to <throat> double, make sure that you, that's, that's what you want to know, what, what, that's what you want to do. So you say yes. And this is how you receive the master code. Okay, this is programming. This is how to program the learning communication module. We're gonna go a little bit of that, a little, gonna go a little faster because we got some other slides to, to touch base now. Uh, the learning communication model can be programmed or registered either via learning direct website or through the link touch. If the alarm communicator account has not been set up, we select the communicator. We select the communicator pad. The choices available will depend on which communication modules are installed on the, on the panel. It could be only Wi-Fi or if you have a GSM, ILP5, or a combination of Wi-Fi and GSM. If you select, uh, you select the APL to toggle between enable and disable. What is the APL? The APL is the advanced protection logic. Does it give you, this is something new, that it give you a little more time if you're gonna disarm or arm and if you're gonna, how it's gonna be sent to the, to the central station. So here, when when you when I enable or disable, uh, we recommend to enable it. This is how it shows when the system is armed. This is entry delay or dialer delay zone is violated, depending on the zone time and arming mode. Depending, on we begin the entry delay or go into instant alarm. You know, you can add to additional, add to additional 25 seconds delay. Um, in total, it can go up to 135 seconds delay. After that, the panel immediately transmits a corresponding CID alarm report based on the violation zone type. This report will be sent in advance of the expiration of program entry delay or 
dialer delay. The advanced alarm report is received by AlarNet. The report includes a bit that set the logic timer um, at AlarNet. The length of this timer is determined by programming entry delay plus program dialer delay plus 75 seconds. AlarNet does not route this alarm report to the central station immediately, but instead holds the alarm report for the length of the delay time. Okay, the alarm net communication must be installed, and the city ID and sub ID information of the central station I needed to proceed. This is how um, this is where you put the select um, the information for the city ID for the S for the CSID, uh, which is the central station, and the sub ID. When you select, um, when you fill out this, all these uh, fields, you select done to save. Then we're going to go and select supervision. It is going to be the 24 hours, non-supervision for 30 days. We select all alarm time to change the time window. We select the, the down arrow icon for more options. Select the up arrow icon for period display option. We have the option of 10 minutes, 15, 30, one hour, two hours, up to 12 hours. <clears throat> then we're gonna we're gonna select the remote access. Uh, I mean remote com account communication and the multi mode communication. In order to do that, we select the, uh, no, after that, we select the down arrow for more options. Uh, the GSM fault time to change the fault time by default the 60, we leave it in 60. Uh, GSM rollover, I'm sorry, or uh, GSM 24 hour test. Here, if um, ILP5 or Wi Fi module is installed, you select the IP fault time to change the fault time. You select um, use DHCP to toggle the network from DHCP to a static IP. You press arrow, the down arrow. You select the GSM rollover to allow all signals to roll to GSM. You select 24 hour test to enable testing signals to the central station. It's all, the, again, it's all depending on the customer, how, they, how the customer wants the, the panel to be set up. Uh, always save, you always save. Now, when you save it, after the control sends the program information to the alarm communicator, a warning that the radio is and register will appear. You select OK. You select common diagnostic to register the alarm communicator. <clears throat> you press down the, the arrow icon to select setup communication. Select register device. The registration message is then sent and the unique way for the acknowledgement of the alarm. It's, uh, it's sending right now, it's sending all the information. After, uh, when you get the registration successful, it's gonna be displayed on the screen after the communicator connects to alarm it, and verify the account information enter it's right, it's correct. You select now the back arrow icon two times to return to the installer programming screen. So we're done with registration, the, the communicator with alarm name. Once the communicator has been registered, select COM Diagnostics. Then you go to select GSA information. The GSA information and signal strength will be displayed. 
minimal, you need a minimal three signal bars here, like I'm showing right here. So you have a, a good communication. Otherwise, communication is going to be 100%. Uh, we select the Ethernet information. The Ethernet information is, is going to be displayed on the screen. And then you select the down arrow icon. We select communication status to show the status of the panel. Uh, it's going to tell you everything passed. IP OK, GSM OK, the, the alarm is not registered. Not register. uh, you select this communication to send signal to the monitor station. Again, we we got the OK. It's going to show you the results on the, on the, on the, on the screen. Then we're going to go and select the necessary test options um like Ethernet is oh you're gonna send a GSA message, you're gonna send any kind of message, you're gonna say internet. You can here you can test all of them. Then you can go to back arrow. When you finish testing all these fields, we're going to select the communication ID numbers to view information about the, the panel. Here it's going to show the, the, the MAC address, all the information that from this panel. We're going to go select um, app hour to configure the, the Wi-Fi. You select uh, configure Wi-Fi. It's going to select, uh, it's going to it's going to scan the uh, anything. It's going to broadcast all the networks available. Or you can manually configure the AP, like no broadcasting network um, pre-configured. These are the options that you have. Um, Wi-Fi setup, Wi-Fi setup. Select the desired network, then it's going to show you a list of the, of the available uh, wireless. You select edit, then you enter the uh, network key if required. I just select join to the to the to the network. After you join it, you can even manually configure the IP. Uh, use it for known broadcasting network configuration. Um, there's also all this type of security for a wireless, open, WPA1, WPA2, web, WPS, and the network type, infrastructure or at us. <clears throat> okay, we're gonna see now some user functions on the link touch uh, L50-210. Entering master user programming. You select more on the first page, on the main page, and then you select tools. From the second home page screen, you enter the master code, which is one, two, three code. Well, I mean, by default is one, two, three, four, master code. Installer code is two, one, one, four. No, I mean, four, one, one, two. The master user code is one, two, three, four. And then we're gonna add, edit, or delete user code. From the master user screen, you select users. You select master, and you select edit. Then select user code. And then here, you're gonna enter the new user code. And then after you, you enter the new user code, a four-digit user code, you select done. You save it. Remember, always save it. We always gotta save. Otherwise you won't you won't recognize it. To exit master user programming, select the back arrow to exit master user programming mode. So you back to the main page. Then you select back 
the back arrow to exit master user programming module here, the back. And then you return to the main screen. That's how you get out of the the user configuration screen. Uh, we're gonna see a little bit about how you uh, set up a video on the Lynch Touch uh, 5210. You select on the main screen, you select the video icon, which is in the top uh, right. Uh, there is a note that in order to for you to to be able to to program a video to see a, uh, a camera in this panel, you must have a L5100 Wi-Fi or the L or the ILP5 installed, and the cameras have to be on the same line of the um, of the panel. Otherwise, we won't recognize you, won't see it. The, um, after you go videos, the system will automatically scan for camera. If no camera is found, you scan again by selecting a scan the lower right. Well, up to you do it, you scan it again. It automatically doesn't, doesn't see anything. Uh, then it's gonna find cameras and it's gonna put it on the screen. Like in this case, for example, camera one, two, three, four with the IP address and the MAC address. Then you select the camera you want until it turns green. You select it again, I will turn yellow and the edit appears. Here, you're gonna rename the camera. So right now it's camera number one. You're gonna rename it. You're gonna put like, uh, I don't know, garage, uh, driveway, kitchen, and then after that you said, I mean, sorry, you press done. Then you go back, select back. Then the camera is gonna display. That's how you're gonna see it on the screen. And this is how you um, you, still, uh, you program the cameras on the on the L5210. Um, we're going to see a little bit how to te uh, test in the system. To perform this function, always good to test the system. To perform this function, after entering the installer programming mode, you select test. And then the installer test menu will be shown. <clears throat> like what they're showing right now on the screen. The walk test, the go, no go test. The RF sniffer test, dialer test. And then the walk, um, the walk test will allow, allows uh, each protection point to be checked for proper operation. Test the panel battery and send a, a test report to the central station if, if it was enabled. So in other words, it's gonna it's gonna go over like walk. It's gonna go over device by device, and it's gonna test it. We're gonna make sure it works. There's communication between the the device and the and the panel, and it's gonna send a report if uh, you you enable it. Now. Uh, open each protection point and listen for three bits from the keeper followed with the song voice uh, description. If you select the go, no go test, the test mode is used to verify adequate RF signal strength. That's the uh, go, no go test. The uh, discovery, sound discovery sends the sound data to a total connect. Uh, during the RF sniffer test, the keeper will display all active RF zones. For each transmitter, causing each one to send a signal. As the system number receives a signal from the each transmitter, the sound number of the transmitter will display from the uh, will disappear from the display. That's the RF uh, sniffer test. Um, 
the dial test, if you select the dial test, it's going to send an E601 manual test along with the user number. It's dialing, it's, um, it's testing the, the communication with the, with the central station, uh, depending on how you, you, you set up the, the field. And then we have, um, if we select the diagnostic, um, it's going to open the diagnostic menu. <clears throat> and if you're going to reboot, you're going to select reboot to perform a complete power reset. It's going to ask you, are you sure? And you, you're going to say yes, and then it's going to reboot the system, make sure everything works. <clears throat> this is how it's going to look like when you reboot the system. It's going to be checking the system integrity, and it's going to go scanning, uh, scanning the whole system, and then it's going to, it's going to show the, it's going to show the the main menu again. Everything's go back to normal. Um, this is if you need information about uh, you need more information about the the panel. You can go. This we have some uh, self paid courses at HoneywellDiscoveryTraining.com. Or you can go to the SecurityHoneywell.com HSC. Uh, you click on my web tag. This is the user ID and password. So you can log in. You can look for more information. Um, that's a, a 1-800 uh, telephone number, which you can call for tech support also. With this, we finished um, the webinar. Uh, we have like a couple minutes only, I guess. Uh, if you guys got any questions,